So the first of these addition reactions we'll take a closer look at is hydrohalogenation. So in this case, hydrohalogenation involves either HCl, HBr, or HI. And it is a Markovnikov addition, just like it was with alkenes. Uh, so the H goes on the less substitute side, the bromine on the more substitute side. Uh, and in this case, it does not have any stereospecificity. And we can regulate it. We can add either one equivalent or two. So one thing to note here, I'm starting with a terminal alkyne. And the reason I'm starting with a terminal alkyne is because I want to talk about Markovnikov and anti-Markovnikov. So if you notice, if I have an alkyne, and I don't care if one side is super long and one super short, as long as it's not a terminal alkyne, but an internal alkyne, then there's no such thing as Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov to even talk about. This sp hybridized carbon and this sp hybridized carbon are equally substituted. And so you can't say what goes on what side. And you, Unless it's symmetrical, you're going to get a mixture of products. The H and the Br could go either way. So that's why I'm going to use terminal alkynes here, like the one above, uh, for my examples. That way we can actually talk about whether these reactions are Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov. And, and again, for hydrohalogenation, it's definitely Markovnikov. So the H got added to that less substitute side, and obviously the bromine got added to the more substitute carbon. And the second equivalent does the same thing. We'll add another H on that less substitute side and another bromine on the more substitute side. And the question is, again, do you have one equivalent or two? And that's based on how you specify the reagents. If you just say one equivalent, great, you're going to end up with an alkene. But if you say we're adding two equivalents or excess, then we're going to add it all the way to the alkane and add two equivalents. Uh, one thing to note, we do know that for the second equivalent adding, that we're going to go through a carbo cation intermediate, which means you might have to worry about rearrangements and stuff like that. So, But the mechanism is less well understood in how we get from the alkyne to the alkene. It turns out the carbocation you'd form would be pretty unstable, which makes it uh, a little unlikely that maybe it even forms. Uh, there's some evidence that maybe this is some sort of bimolecular reaction, things of a sort. And there's even evidence that maybe there's multiple competing reactions going on here, mechanisms, I should say, going on here. Um, but what that ultimately means that you probably don't have to know the mechanism here because it's not really all that well understood ourselves. So uh, that is the deal. Uh, just want to get that last little tidbit in there. And uh, we'll see this as a kind of a common concept in this chapter. And just like with alkenes, you can add HBr specifically in the presence of peroxide. And you guys might recall this is specific for HBr. HCl and HI, this does not uh, do any of them. So ROR here stands for peroxide. And when we add that to an alkene, it goes anti-Markovnikov. So the bromine on the less substituted side, the hydrogen went on the more substituted carbon. Uh, and you can do the same thing with alkynes. And again, you can add one equivalent or two. And if you had one equivalent, okay, then H to the more substitute side, one bromine to the less substitute side. And if you do it again, then another H on the less substitute side and another bromine, I should say actually another H on the more substitute side and another bromine on the less substitute side. So it had both equivalents go anti-Markovnikov. And again, it's specific for HBr. If you had HCl or HI with peroxide, they still go Markovnikov.